Greetings, brothers and sisters. So I was um, thinking about this last night because there's people still, I believe, on the Trump train in terms of believing that Trump is going to turn this country around or something to that nature or that this country can be turned around or people in the truth community or something. I mean, I think this is across the board. The liberals believe the same thing on a different way. People in the truth community, you have all these various groups of consciousness that think that there can be a change here, that there is, you know, this war of belief systems and to some extent demographics who believe things are going to get better for them. You have all these people who, you know, see that we're in sort of a crisis, a free fall, and people are thinking that their group is going to come out a little better on the other side. And we now know, if you're a Republican or a Trump supporter or a person in the truth community, again, these various demographics are a QB, you should now know that your group is not. (laughs) That when the dust settles here, things are going to be worse for you. And so in terms of the people in the truth community, back when this, you know, really took off on the internet, back in 2000s, early 2000s, when I was a part of this, right, I, you know, this channel started in 2007, and it already, there was already a movement afoot where different narratives, alternative narratives, and things that had existed for years on AM radio, and I talked about my brother having an AM radio station in the like late 80s, early 90, 90s. He was a, a program, not a station. And, you know, there was these narratives out there, books like people would put out, sort of underground newsletters and things. And those things started to come out on the internet. And then there was these events in 2001 and other events that made this a very compelling set of storylines that made more sense in the official story. And so the thing took off, right? This movement took off. In the early days, there was this attitude that there was an information war. This was pushed by Alex Jones, who was the prominent figure, you know, someone who had a radio show and he had some financial backing. Obviously, it came out later that he was a shill, you know, like a legitimate shill, like people throw the word shill around. So he was propped up, he was put out there and other people, but specifically him. And there was this idea that if you woke everybody up, if everybody received this information, the world would change. And now so many years later, and, you know, this is pretty much played out even before what happened to Trump, when Trump got trumped at the end, it was clear, it should be clear to everyone that wasn't the case. Because most people have come across various narratives, right? You have people in your life that you've talked about, truth or narratives to, that reject them. They reject your interpretation. You might even have a broken relationship or falling out. could be somebody like your spouse or your family members or significant others, but you have some sort of, you know, people in your life that you've talked to about this that you no longer have the same relationship, and they clearly don't believe what you're saying and look at you as some sort of a problem, like you're mentally ill or just, you know, they don't look at you the same way they used to, And you're frustrated with them and their sheepleness. And you can see that now, right? With what happened with Trump, because Trump came in and Trump was never, like he never really had any power. It appeared that he had power because he was the president and he had, you know, a very strong following. He had the the power of a following, right? I guess he's going to start some kind of um, his own Twitter, right? (laughs) But even with all of his tweets, he didn't really move the needle in any real direction other than people's personal opinions on things and them showing up and demonstrating or whatever. But they never, you know, the Trumpers never figured out a way how to, you know, sort of monetize in the sense of using it as a force of change. He monetized his his base in terms of donations and having, you know, banking money and things like this, but he never used his his people as a, and a you know, a, a, a weapon of change, right? The support he had, and even if he didn't, wouldn't matter. And so what you see now, there's lots of people who flirt with the 
truth community narratives, but they still are putting on masks and, you know, they're still going to take their medicine or whatever it is. Because even though they watch truther videos, when crisis happens, they're still going to trust the establishment. Deep down, they, you know, they would rather trust the establishment and they don't really have any ability to do anything else. I mean, that's, you know, that's all of us to some extent because we're 100% dependent on the system or even 80%. Like, say, you have a garden, you, you know, whatever it is, you know, but we're pretty much dependent on this system. And most of us can't imagine a life without it. And that's the problem. That's always been the problem. Because the system itself is unsalvageable, which I've covered in so many videos. It can't be saved. And so this idea was out there that if you woke enough people up and they got this information, they would create change in some way. They would vote differently. They would spend their money differently. And the media and you know the powers that be would have to take your view seriously. The media would have to start reporting on these uh, narratives. The justice system would have to, you know, start to investigate some of these things on some level, that the system would take these discoveries that were happening, these narratives that were happening on social media and incorporate them into the mainstream narrative. And that clearly hasn't happened. The exact opposite has happened, which you see with the Q movement, where they're taking QBs and they are, you know, I got this, um, another QB video to make about all these things that they're using. The Q community, HBO, has started a series, you know, a documentary series on Q and all these things. But you see now what they've done is they have taken these narratives and used them as a weapon against people to silence them to pathologize people, to say they're either crazy or a uh, danger or both. And so the opposite has happened. Having these truther beliefs is, you know, bad for you. It's bad for your, your place in our civilization. You're looked as a negative. It's a negative thing. And certainly none of these things are taken seriously by the media or the government. It's the opposite. So that idea of, you know, an information war has failed. There's so many people who reject it. So many people who've seen these videos or seen these, uh, you know, have come in contact with these narratives, have been talked to by their relatives or friends and whatever, and have rejected them. I mean, this is, you know. And so it's pretty clear how the, the breakdown is. You have some people who are really into it, right? People who are willing to put it on the line, so to speak, and, you know put this information out there and put their name to it. And they're not anonymous, you know, people who are willing to come out and say, this is what I believe. And then there's people who are lurkers and dabblers who are, you know, they kind of, you know, they're open to these ideas, but when push come to shove, I mean, look at the amount of people that are wearing masks and some people are just forced by their job or their circumstance and they'll do it. But the majority of people are doing it even after, a lot of the mandates, a lot of the, you know, whatever was going on in their town, because there was a time where police were given tickets and, you know, businesses were really hard about it, right? Businesses were really strict about this rule. But now in many places, you could walk into a store without a mask and nobody says anything. Like you can do it and there's no city ordinance and there's no, you know, there's no pressure from a lot of these private organizations, stores and things to wear a mask and these mandates and things have, you know, fallen, you know, fallen off and people are still wearing them. And the reason they're wearing them by choice is because there was a successful selling of this idea of masks that if you are not wearing one, you're a bad person. Most people are wearing masks because they don't want to be seen as a bad person, even if they don't believe in the masks themselves, even if they think the masks don't work, even if you know, they with their masks they work they wear are ridiculous because you can wear anything basically, any piece of cloth, and you know maybe their masks are dirty or whatever the bandanas or whatever they're doing, but whatever they're doing, they're doing it only because they don't want to be seen. As their major reason is they don't want to be seen as being a bad person, as somebody who's a spreader, somebody who isn't taking this thing seriously. You know, it's a sign, right? I mean, I saw how it went, right? So about 
you know, in the beginning, there was like few people wearing masks. And there's people who really believe in the masks. There's people who believe the masks are keeping them safe or keeping other people safe. They don't really do the research. They, you know, completely trust Fauci and the powers that be, the CDC, and they're not, you know, ever going to change that probably, at least not in this life. But in terms of, you know, the beginning, it was about 10, 15 percent of people started wearing masks for no reason. They weren't even saying, you know, before, you know, when people were <laughs> told not to wear masks, right, <laughs> that they weren't effective and they were actually making things worse. And it was surface to surface contact. That's what the, the original story was. And then more and more people started, and then it was like 50-50. And then the mandates came out, and everyone felt like they had to. And then now it's just a part of normal life. And people are just going along because it's, you know, they don't want to stand out, right? They don't want to stand out as a troublemaker. And that's, you know, that should tell you everything you need to know about people rising up to change the system. There's, it's not possible. You might get people protesting or rioting or expressing their anger, but that, you know, I've said before so many times, that doesn't do anything because there's no leverage. There's no, like, weapon out there that the people have to stop the people that control the system, the so-called elite, from rolling out the agenda. And I've said this over and over again, that the people control the system, the royal, you know, whatever it is, the royal people, the people that control a government or whatever, the people behind the government, the small group of wealthy people that control any system, any government in any time period, their number one fear is the mob, is people rising up and getting angry and turning on them. Like, you know, that's just it. I mean, other people figuring out that they have been, you know, duped or being taken advantage of, or at least when things go bad, who are they going to blame? They're always going to blame the leaders, and so they've created various, you know, uh, stopping points. Like they have these resistors and some sort of electronic device that stop a surge protection, right? Trump and Biden and, you know, various other people are surge protectors. They stop the mob from finding out who's really behind the controlling system. But none of those things matter because the system, like the fear of the mob no longer matters because the system itself is unsustainable. And in various ways, human beings have become a threat to wipe out all life on this planet or do, you know, devastation to this planet just by either gorging on too many resources or polluting or atomic weaponry. So many different ways we are making the world worse. Spiritually, the, you know, the, our spiritual energy all of it. We're making the world into a contaminated place. And the most vulnerable species on this planet right now, I mean, there's some endangered species and things, but the most vulnerable is human beings because of our dense population growth. And the weaknesses, physical weaknesses, psychological weaknesses, and just the unnatural nature of human life. So the people who control the system, they, you know, they're doing desperate. I mean, they're like, you know, this is where you're in the fourth quarter of a game and you're down, you know, three touchdowns or you know, whatever it is. It's desperation time and they're trying to do, you know, crazy stuff to save their system and save their power, save their, you know, their privileges and things. And so they're not taking requests. It could be 90% of people would be against them, against the agenda they're rolling out, which isn't the case, by the way. It's not 90% anyway. But you could wake up 90% of the people and it still wouldn't make a difference because they aren't listening to, you know, your complaints or your point of view. They know what everybody wants and they know they can't give it to you. The same thing with Trump, because you had all these Trumpers who believed that Trump was going to make America great again, which wasn't, you know, America was never great. And it, you know, it wasn't something that you could go back to some distant time period or recent time period. That wasn't going to happen. You're not going to go back to the 50s or whatever it is, right? And so Trump was just saying what you wanted to hear. He was telling people what they wanted to hear because that's what Trump does. Trump is one of the best self-promoting people. He's great at selling himself. And he did it over and over again throughout his life. And he's, you know, a snake oil salesman, a flim flam man. I think he had good intentions to some extent. Like he kind of wanted to do some of these things. But deep down he knew he couldn't. He was just telling people what they wanted to hear. That should be pretty obvious now. 
that he had never had real power and there was never any movement. There was never any Q. There was ne- never any, you know, Trump. There was never any anybody out there that was going to restore the America that you grew up on. It just wasn't going to happen. It was, you know, that ship had sailed and now it should be obvious. Now it should be obvious to everyone because the powers that be, this movement that people are, you know, attributing to liberals and the left, and it really isn't, this movement, you see where the power is. They have the media, they have the social media, which is more important. They have all these things locked down. The celebrity culture, the businesses, I mean, you can see the local governments even. Like what happened with COVID, the local governments, almost, you know, most of them, almost all of them, the governors and the mayors and, you know, especially these cities, pretty much cooperated 100% with, you know, the beasts, with the beastly system. They just took the, you know, the official story, no matter how, what, you know, complaints there were, or how it would affect the local economy and small businesses, because there's just all these people now that are financially effed on something we know doesn't work anymore. There's no more lockdowns. The lockdowns are disappearing. Even California isn't as bad as it was. And COVID is as bad as ever. And it's not because of anything new. It's because the lockdowns never were going to work. They were a bad way to do it, right? They didn't, you know, have any chance of delivering a positive result. And the price for this is small businesses, mom and pop stores and restaurants are, you know, they're done, right? Many of them have gone out of business and a lot of them are just going to struggle. They're just going to be in such a hole from now on. But the important piece of this is know that local governments, local mayors, local you know, city councils, almost all of them went along with this agenda. And it's just not obviously COVID. It's all of this stuff they're rolling out. They're changing our social dynamics and our language and cancel culture. You know, things like mother and father are becoming the words mother and father are becoming inf- offensive and things. I mean, there's things like this every day you're seeing and the power is behind this movement. You see it. It doesn't matter how many people are against it. They're not taking polls. They're not asking your opinion and they don't really have a choice. They don't care if you get upset. They don't care how you react because the system that they control is imploding and they're just doing what they, you know, think is best for them, for themselves. They're not going down with the ship. They're not saving you. They're not setting up future generations. And this is, again, you know, people have this idea, oh, it's the elite, you get rid of the elite and the system works great. No, the system is always been controlled by the elite. It's a system that's built with a, you know, a, a top heavy, small group of people that have billions and trillions of dollars worth of resources, collectively, trillions of dollars worth of resources, the whole royal family model, the whole wealthy, you know, bloodlines, all these things. I mean, it is a system that is completely psychologically and spiritually evil. It's a bad system. The people who run it are mentally ill. And if you get rid of them, the system collapses because it's not a system that can be made fair or made equitable or any of these things. It's not a good system. It's not based in nature. It doesn't connect you to God. It's a materialistic system that is taking you away from God and your family and nature and all these things. And so it's a a system that's always been doomed because it goes against the divine will and forces and only has a limited time offer. It only has a limited shelf life, and that time is up. It's the system's time is up. The Kali Yuga is coming to an end, and it's something that, you know, there needs to be something better that takes its place. So all of these movements of change, either the truth movement or, you know, any of these movements, even the, you know, the ones on the left, all these movements that are about change and, you know, racial justice and, you know, changing the social dynamics on the left and the Trumpers on the right and the Cubies, all these, you know, different movements that want some sort of change are all working to change a system that is completely bad for us, wrong, evil, debauched. I mean, any negative word you use for it would fit unnatural, right, ungodly, an abomination a system that is bad for us and is making us worse on every level. But each of these groups, each of these demographics, each of these movements have been focused on changing the system and thinking they can make the system good, that they see the one problem with the system. And if their change is manifested and incorporated into the system, the system will somehow be good. 
and it'll be good for everybody and the world will be some sort of utopia and that's just ridiculous if you just look at the you know the effects of the system on the human population and how human beings are and all the negatives and all the you know i mean we're hemorrhaging everything we're stupider we're weaker we're meaner we're all these again any n negative adjective we're worse now than we were before more entitled all these things the reason for this information, the end of obscurantism, which I've talked about before, this idea of the people that control the system lying to you, the system itself lying to you, or putting out false information or disinformation, the reason that people are now becoming aware of the lies and the deception, the evil of the system, is because we need to do something better. We have to know why the system collapsed. Everyone needs to know why. It isn't about changing the system or fixing the system which everybody wants. I mean, I want it. Like, you know, it's not like I don't want it. You know, the problem is we don't want to change. Like, it's pretty obvious we have to change. But most people are like, well, we have to change those people over there. We have to change the elite. We have to change the left. We have to change the right. We have to change this demographic, the science people. We, know, we have to change the religious people. I mean, depending on your point of view, you're looking at somebody else and saying, all those guys over there have to change. Everyone else has to change but me. That's the human tragedy right now. That people each, you know, each individual thinks that they don't have to change. It's just all the other bad people around them. And so all of us have to change. We have to change collectively. We have to change our orientation to this world. And when you've been programmed and you grow up in a system and you're used to it, it's very hard to think about those kind of wholesale changes because people like to sit and talk. Like that's what all this is. People like to write comments. People like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they like to share their beliefs and pontificate and tell people how great you know how brilliant they are and how much they know i mean that's a big part of social media everybody thinking that their opinion is valuable and worth something and they're you know they're insightful and they've cracked the code i mean so many people think they just get it right and it's the truth community is the worst and the worst of this so many people have a you know slight change in their consciousness and all of a sudden there's some sort of you know spiritual rocket scientist or whatever i mean there's a dogma to the truth or community where all these rigid beliefs, you know, there's a rigidness in the truth community where a lot of stuff that's completely BS and disinformation have become these um, carved in stone, right? Like these are the words of God on the, you know, tablets or whatever, the Ten Commandments or something. Like people are like, oh yeah, this is, you know, which themselves, the Ten Commandments are bogus because they're, you know, they're not written in a way that could be successful. They're written in a negative. They tell you what to not to do, which always doesn't work with people. You have to go towards something. You can't go away from something. You don't, you know, no isn't a good part of a goal. You don't want to have something, don't do this, don't do that, right? You want to do this, do that, right? That's the way the human mind works, to be positive about something. Thou shall not kill. You're meditating on killing, right? Your mind and you have, your subconscious mind doesn't process the word no. You know, be peaceful, be gentle, right? This is, you know, Instead of do not kill, be peaceful, be gentle. If you're peaceful and gentle, you're not going to kill, right? So, I mean, all of these things. But anyways, there's a dogma in the truth community. I see in the comments all the time, and people are locked in. You have a lot of rigid thinkers. So, I mean, the truth community has just, you know, been failing now since, um, I mean, early on and all this stuff that's happened with these various movements that come out. And you got a lot of people now who are just talking bumper stickers and all these things. But anyways, none of this change is about changing externally, changing the system, changing the world, changing other people, prosecuting them, seeing them locked up, making sure that justice is done, all these things that people gravitate to. The reason that this information is coming out, so you realize that the system you grew up is completely unnatural and goes against God. And it's a bad system. And it's hurt you. It's hurt me. It's hurt all of us. It's made us into less than. It's made us into egotistical people, divas, and you know, people with psychological issues, and unnatural people who can't sustain relationships and have no real connection to God. Our religions suck. Our religions act as a as a block between us and God, giving us false promises and faulty cheat teachings, warped teachings, and things. And so now that we have this information that our system sucks and it's doomed then what are we going to do? Like, then we can prepare, then we can prepare our children, then we can start thinking about what would be a good system. Like, this system is a bad system. Okay, well, what would be a good system? 
and then working towards that and connecting to God, certainly the most important part, you know, the heartfulness meditation I talk about, which is a system that's been given at this time in a way that's never been available to people to connect to God internally and develop internal relationships, not only with God and develop your heart as an instrument to understand your life and reality and clean your heart and all this stuff, the transmission that's given, but also connect to your soul on a deeper level and have your soul be in, you know, ennobled and emboldened to where it's now being diminished, right? Our system diminishes our soul, the current system, where now your soul will be more of a presence in your life and you'll understand your spiritual side, which has been minimized, right? So now you can get in touch with your soul's path, see your soul's path more clearly, your spiritual reasons for being here. You have your personal reasons, your personal goals, your ambitions, things you wanna achieve, on a material level, but what about your soul and your soul's path? And so all of those things are now out there in front of people, but very few people want to look at it. Very few people want to see that they themselves have to change internally. It's not about the elite. It's not about any of these things. Trump isn't going to save you. There's no savior. The system can't be saved and shouldn't be saved. It's a bad system. And so we should leave something better for our kids and start working on something better, developing the skills and tools that we need, things that maybe we, you know, don't appeal to us right now, gardening, working with our hands, right, being more in community and these things, localizing things, right, instead of staring at a, a screen all day, you know, and having our social interactions on a, you know, with a, you know, a interface device between us and our social world, but having real life relationships with people and and reclaiming our humanness. And so all those things have to happen. I don't know the time frame for this, but it's obvious now. I think for most people, if you really look at it, it's just so obvious. The system sucks, right? The system's bad for you. And so we need something better. And so what are the fundamental aspects of our system? Well, it's material based. Our system right now is 100% based in materiality. There's very little to do with anything divine or our soul. Our soul isn't really even a presence in most people's lives. People are like, I have a soul, but how many people feel connected to a soul? People believe in God, but how many people have had in any real contact with God where they feel God's presence, where God is all around us? God is in everything and everybody. God's in every atom, every particle of the universe. God's love, the feeling of love is there. How many people even feel love? Because it's so materialistic, our system. People feel pleasure, but not love, right? People feel... You know, they have exciting and emotional, like, happy things. Like, you know, they feel happy about materialistic things, right? Indulging in materialistic things. But how many feel love in their heart? How many people have felt something in their heart, right? There's lots of people who have never felt love in their entire life. And so this idea of pursuit of happiness, happiness is a lower thing. Happiness is something that is only measured by misery. But people believe they can be happy all the time, that utopia is just about indulging and having no problems, having no miseries. And, you know, that's also false. You know, life isn't supposed to be like that. In fact, we need challenges. We're problem solvers. People that don't have problems, look at what happens to people when they retire. They fall apart. They no longer have any work. They no longer have any, you know, society doesn't have any use for them. Their family doesn't really like them and want to see them, right? So people who lose their work and don't have any goals, don't have problems and things to achieve don't have obstacles they just you know start to wither away people wait for their whole life to retire then they retire and it's just one physical ailment after another before you know it they're you know they're babbling they're drooling on themselves they don't have any you know they don't have any purpose in life they're just falling apart physically and they go through this slow elongated death process as the you know powers that be absorb their resources the medical community the medical establishment just sucks up as much resources as they have left until they, you know, exit this world drugged and scared and disconnected. And, you know, maybe they connect with where they're supposed to go next, but most of them don't. Some souls just hang around here depressed and lost. They don't know how to transition back to the spiritual realm. I mean, that's a, you know, sad fact of life on planet Earth. And so, you know, we, we can't be doing that anymore, right? <laughs> Like all the things that you see now, like, all right, what's the opposite of that? 
well, you know, incorporate your spiritual aspect, connect with your soul, find out what God wants you to do and become, realize you have a bigger purpose than just this life. It's a small part of your collective existence. You have multiple lives, multiple existences on here and other places, and you have a spiritual essence, and it has a purpose, so find out what that is. I and mean, this is all stuff that the heartfulness system helps people to figure out because it's, you know, built for this specific purpose in this specific time. And so there's a, you know, system that's there for any of this, right? And then, you know, connect to God on a deeper level and then build a system, a materialistic system that with that in mind, with God having input collectively, like everyone's connected to God on a deeper level, not the God of religion, this, you know, crap that you've been told your whole life what God is or what God isn't through books and a system like a controlled religion, a power structure, but connect to God, you know, inside yourself internally. And so then God is, you know, telling you and showing you what to do and use your heart. Well, this doesn't feel right. I don't feel good about this. All of a sudden your heart is now contributing to your decision making, your heart being purified and connected to God in a deeper level. Because, you know, this is a choice point for humanity. We either are going to go up or we're going to go down or we're going to disappear. Like those are the things that are on the table. We have to evolve to be like something completely different than we are. Like we have to reach a whole level, you know, a whole different level of consciousness and be superior, not to be like these brainiacs where we're all geniuses, but to be a society where we're smarter, but we're also like saints, you know, a society of saints, a society of highly developed selfless people that are service oriented and are connected to God in a different way. And they're just wiser and more developed and more better, just better, you know, versions, not superheroes, not because we're physically stronger or we can, you know, have superpowers because like stupid, right? <laughs> Those are materialistic things, but to be better as a, you know, people, just like good people, the kind of people that, you know, other people like, oh, wow, that's a good person, right? Like we all have people in our lives. We're like, oh, that person's really great. Like you have somebody who's stands out as being just better than other people. Well, what if everybody was like that? In fact, everyone has to be like that. So that's the next stage. And we have to choose it. So that's the problem because most people just don't want to choose this. I mean, if humanity's going down because people are stubborn and they just don't want to get better, people want to be losers and negative and materialistic and they want to bask in their own misery and their own complaints and their own, you know, bitterness and, you know, all of it hatred towards others. I mean, this is what's happening right now, that people are given the opportunity to change and they just don't want it. They just want to look at other people and blame them and be mad and be, you know, sucky. <laughs> people just want to suck. They're, they're attached to their own suckiness. And even though they're given a chance to go to a higher level, I mean, you can see this your whole life. People have a chance, right? And sometimes they, you know, some part of them's doing it. They're giving up drinking or gambling or, you know, cheating or whatever it is and they're you know they're becoming good people they're they're doing a good job they're you know they're being contributors to society and their family and everyone's like oh well, you know bob is getting better you know Susie's getting better right you know whatever it is and people are like oh you know they're just about to turn the corner and then all of a sudden they're like one day they wake up they're like yeah this sucks you know it's boring i don't want to do this and they go you know take a drink or you know start betting or do whatever negative things they do, self-destructive behaviors, and they just go back to what they were doing before. And that's what humanity's doing right now, you know, for the most part. And so again, you know, there's always hope because as long as there's life, there's hope. And things are going to change on the material level that might open these things up. And we'll see how all that plays out right over the next, I don't know, 100 years or so, whatever it's going to take. But at some point, you know, humanity's going to have to make a decision and if they just choose, the, you know, they want to stay stuck in their collective suckiness, stuck in our collective suckiness, you know, then, you know, <laughs> something will happen and something else will take our place or whatever it is. But there's a choice here. We're being given a choice and, you know, it's just for all of us to rise up and choose it. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely pointing from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.